Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope you're having a great day. I thought in today's video we could cover the top 10 chess openings for black against the move of e4, right? We see this opening all the time. What do we play against it, right? There's a lot of options. And in this video, we're going to be covering those options as well as covering the style of play that each one fits, right? Some of us love aggressive and attacking chess. Some of us like more positional, right? Some of us love studying opening theory. We're very passionate about that. Some of us, we only want to spend about 10 minutes on an opening and then just start playing, right? So we're going to be going over that as well as, you know, uh, what, what openings are best suited for beginners, uh, what openings are best suited for advanced, or what openings kind of fit the, the wide range of all levels of play, right? So let's just hop right into it. We have the move of e4, and by the way, guys, these are in no specific order, okay? Uh, you know, in fact, the last opening in this video is my favorite one as of late, so, you know, no, no order here, just going through them one by one. The first opening I thought I'd include is the Petrov's defense, okay? Uh, in which case we start out with the move of e5. We have the move knight of three. If you're thinking about playing the move of e5, I would highly consider you know a move like knight f6 going into the Petrov's defense. Knight c6 is is not a bad move at all. We see it a ton at the professional level, but there's so much that you got to study for, right? I mean, we got to study for the Ponziani opening, the Scotch game slash Scotch gambit. We got to study for the Italian game, Gilco Piano, Evans gambit. We got to think about Bishop e5 with the Roy Lopez, which is honestly just a, a world of its own, right? So there's a ton of stuff we got to study for. If you play the move of knight f6, though, you're the one that's going to have advantage in terms of preparation, right? Here's the idea. We're, we're not defending our pawn, which knight c6 obviously does. Instead, we're attacking the pawn on e4. And there's some options that white has here. I mean, this includes d4, knight c3. Most of the time, though, you're going to see white just take this pawn on e5. But no, guys. Even though we want to take this pawn back, we can't do it right away. Because if we do so, white is just going to slide their queen out one square, attacking our knight. And if we run away with the knight somewhere, we're going to run into this move of knight c6. Now, this may seem very weird, attacking our queen, until we realize the fact that we are also in check. Right? We're in check, so we got to block. If we block with the bishop, we lose our queen. If we block with the queen, we still lose our queen. Right? So this is just not good. Uh, in the slightest, right? I mean, going back, um, you know, to that move, queen e2, if we play this perfectly, we're going to play d5 and queen e7. Whole idea being, if you run away, we're going to run away as well. But okay, here white can just take, take again, and there's they're simply up a pawn. Uh, you know, obviously, this is a lot better than being down a queen. Uh, being down a pawn is a lot better, but we're still down a pawn, and we don't want that, right? So going back, when white does take on e5, don't take back right away, but play d6 first, kick that knight back, and then capture the pawn on e4, right? Now, if white plays queen e2, we can match that with queen e7, and we're totally fine, right? And, uh, okay, here, if I play something like d4, we can advance in the center, develop our knight. And, you know, in terms of what, you know, uh, what level to play this opening, I would probably say that this is really uh, well suited for intermediate to advanced. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for beginner chess players. Um, honestly, if for a beginner chess player, you might want to go uh, with knight c6 uh, just to start off. And um, that's also going to help you kind of get used to all the openings that white has available. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a good good option for intermediate to advanced. Uh, it will take some theory, right? Uh, but you know what I recommend is wh whatever opening you play, right? Whatever opening you play, try to find a player um, who really used that tool well, right? So so for this opening, Fabio Fabiano Caruana uh, has used the Petrol's defense to great success, um, very high win rate, uh, very solid system. It's it's hard for anyone to beat him when he plays the Petrov. So. Uh, yeah, make sure to look at uh, Fabiano Caruana's games. And I also have a video on it. By the way, uh, most of these openings, uh, not all of them, uh, I haven't made a video on the modern defense yet, but most of these openings I've, uh, you know, I've covered uh, individually in a video before, so I'll leave a link to those um, in the description below. Okay, so, okay, we have the, the Petrov's defense, which starts out with the move of E5. What else do we have available? Well, there's kind of something on the other end of the spectrum, right? The, the Petrov is a little more positional. Now we have the Sicilian defense. This is very hyperdynamic and aggressive, okay? Here's the idea. We're simply going to develop. My favorite move is d6. And we're waiting for white to advance in the center of the board, in which case we're going to capture off that pawn. What did we just do here? We traded off a flank pawn for a center pawn, right? So if you look at the central files, the ENT, we have two pawns white only has one and this can can really be considered an advantage right on top of that we have a super long uh pawn island here right a super long pawn group and a little small one as well 
White, on the other hand, they, they kind of have two mediums uh, with a four and a three. This is going to be good for us going into the end game in the future. It's really good to have all those pawns connected in a long chain. Um, you know, from this point, I'm a fan of knight f6 and then the move of a6 with the Nidorf, the Sicilian Nidorf. Uh, you know, this is really Gary Kasparov's main weapon uh, back in his uh, playing days. And uh, yeah, I mean, he was an absolute monster um, in this system. All that to say, this is for advanced players. OK, intermediate to advanced. I mean, I've heard, I've heard some players tell me that, you know, uh, you, or, you know, I've heard coaches say, you, you know, don't don't play this until you're 2000 plus or don't play this until you've, you know, reached a certain level. And there's some truth to that. I don't know if I'd put um you know, the number 2000 on it. I definitely think you could play the Sicilian before that, but all that to say, if you're just learning how to play chess, I would not recommend the Sicilian defense. It's extremely complicated. If you want to keep learning it, it can take a lifetime to learn thousands upon thousands of hours of studying, you know, theory lines, games, etc. So really fun, hyper dynamic, aggressive, um, you know, from this point in the night or if we're looking to play E6, you, you usually don't want to play E5 uh, in the Sicilian because we've already committed to C5 and that makes D5 very weak because no pawns can defend it. So we're going to want to play a move like E6, tuck our bishop and our queen uh, to developmental squares, start looking at moves like B5 and B4 and, and just start playing some fun chess, right? Uh, there's a ton of different lines that white can play here. We have, uh, you know, the English with bishop e3, the Sozin with bishop uh, c4, the classical with bishop e2. Uh, White can go into the main line with the bishop g5. We have h3, ton of different moves here. Uh, but against all of them, white, uh, you know, black does have responses, right? Going back to the move of e4. What else do we have available? Well, one of one of the openings we have is the move of e6. Okay, I actually do think that this is a great opening uh, from the beginner level to the grandmaster level, right? Uh, you know, as I, as I film this, uh, Dean Loren actually just played this, um, you know, in the world championships. So we see this, at, you know, a ton at all levels of play. The idea here is that we're not playing D5 right away, but we're supporting that push, right? We're playing this move D5 and, uh, there's a, there's a ton of things I can do here. We can see the terrorists with knight D2. We can have knight C3, uh, why can go into the exchange, by the way, if they take, we're just going to take back and then just naturally develop. And here, if they push with e5, with the advanced variation, we're going to play c5, right? We're giving white a ton of space, but at the same time, we're going to really make that space a target, right? We're going to make this central pawn on d4 a target right away. c5, knight c6, get that queen out, right? And uh, if white doesn't know the theory, they can lose this game pretty fast, okay? I mean, at this point, we're going to, we can take, we can play a move like knight e7, drop that knight on f5. I mean, look at all this pressure that we have on d4. And here, if white tries to defend it with a move like bishop e3, we simply win a pawn. All that being said, uh, going back to this move, you know, the French defense is a great opening, but there is one downside, and that is the French bishop, okay? And that is this bishop on c8. It's called a French bishop because, well, this bishop is pretty stuck, right? It's, it's, it's not very good. It's stuck. Uh, you know, behind b7 and e6. So if you ever hear someone say, gosh, the French bishop just couldn't get activated, they're saying that in the French defense, they couldn't get their light scored bishop in an active game, right? So that's really the downside of this. Uh, but all that to say, usually black will play bishop d7, rook c8, and just continue playing actively, right? Uh, so yeah, there you go. That is the uh, French defense. Let's now look at the Karo Khan with c6, right? This is also preparing for the move of d5, but a slightly different approach. Notice with this approach, our bishop can still get out, right? And uh, okay, I mean, I also think that this is a great opening for all levels of play. Very simple to learn. Um, you know, and you, obviously with any opening, you can you can spend a ton, a ton of time on it. But all that being said, it's a... Uh, you know, it's definitely a pretty pretty straightforward system. So, you know, if they take on d5 with the exchange, we'll capture back, right? At this point, we can throw our knights out. Uh, you know, if we see a move like knight f3, pin that knight, uh, you know, play a move like e6, bring that bishop out, look to castle kingside, and just continue developing. So that is, that is really the approach to the exchange variation. There's other moves that, you know, uh, white could play here if they don't take. They could play a move like knight c3. In that case, we could always just take on e4 and play knight f6. Uh, we could also see a move like e5 with the advanced variation. In that case, you know, there's this move of bishop f5, which a lot of players like, right? A lot of players play this. Uh, in fact, I used to, but I actually quit playing the Carl Khan in tournament games because of this move. I played bishop f5. I remember one time in Vegas, I lost a game in like 20 moves or something, 21 moves. And it was just, you know, my bishop was, I just, I just get very uncomfortable in positions like that. 
I feel like whenever I do play bishop f5 right away, my bishop's kind of just sitting there and not doing much, trying not to get trapped, etc. So, uh, you know, instead I like this move of g6, okay? Hikaru Nakamura plays this quite a bit. Uh, in fact, you know, he plays g6, and the whole idea here is that we're going to wait to bring this bishop out, right? We're going to wait. We have a move here, uh, you know, like bishop g7. If a move like f4, we can play h5, get that knight to h6. Is the knight on the rim dim? Yes, but this knight is on the rim uh, for a purpose, right? We're looking at this move of knight f5, you know, and at this point, okay, we can play bishop f5. There's also moments where bishop g4 is a great option, pinning that knight to the queen. And here, if white takes, we take back with the knight e6. And kind of similarly to the French defense, at this point, we're going to want to play c5, right? We want to play c5, so we're going to start prepping that with moves like you know, knight out, rook over, bishop back even, queen out, right, to that b6 square, uh, you know, attacking that long-term diagonal, as well as b2, here black with a great game to work with, okay. Uh, I also do want to mention, going back, uh, if we do see this move of e5, there's also this move of c5, right, uh, one of my private students, in fact, uh, shout out to Adam Safer, uh, you know, plays this move of c5, and at first I told him, look, I mean, why don't, you know, why are you playing c6 d5 c5 right that's three moves why don't you just play e6 d5 c5 you could have the same position but have a pawn on e6 but then he responded and said what if i don't want a pawn on e6 and i thought about it and i was like that's actually a brilliant idea right if you love the french defense ideas but you hate that french bishop play this right play the caro and against the advanced play c5 right you can bring that knight out do all the same kind of stuff but get this bishop out first and then continue with your regular French defense theory. Okay. Now going back, what else do we have? Well, we've covered two moves, which prepare the move of D five. What if we just play D five right away, right? What if we just throw it out there? Well, in this case, the main line is queen captures and then queen a five. Notice here, you're usually not supposed to bring the queen out in the opening, but the Scandinavian defense is probably the most you know famous exception for that uh, because it's hard for white to kick this queen around, right? This knight isn't able to do it for four more moves technically speaking in fact i mean how would you even get there to a, to one of these squares and uh, this bishop obviously can't do anything the only move that white can play to to really start attacking that queen like crazy is b4 but that just sacks a pawn uh usually here you see move like d4 and in that case okay we'll develop play c6 that way we can tuck our queen back if we need to and you know play a move like bishop f5 here we have e6 on the way and in this position, we can actually castle either direction, right? We have some flexibility if we want to castle king side or queen side. A lot of Scandi players, uh, I believe, will keep their king in the center for a little bit and just kind of wait to see where white is setting up, which direction they're trying to go with this thing, and then they'll decide uh, which way to castle based off of that decision, right? Uh, and that's the main line, right? So when, when you do take on d5, queen captures back is the main line. I'm also a fan of this move knight f6, though. In fact, I played this when I was a kid. Uh, this is what my uh, my old chess coach taught me when I was just uh, you know about eight years old, and I was you know I was playing this a lot, looking to simply capture back with the knight. Right, the main move that I always saw was the move of d4. Okay, now in that case we're going to capture back. We're sitting at even material. Play a move like knight b6. If white develops their king kingside knight, we can just fian fianchetto our bishop, castle kingside. We're playing chess. C5 ideas on the way as well. Um, c5 is a even here uh, you know uh, a playable move um, and okay if knight c3 we actually have the move of e5 now i i once was white playing against the scandinavian and i played knight c3 i remember the exact game uh you know in super nationals in tennessee and black played e5 and my heart sank a little bit i was going gosh i know this move i should have played knight f3 first because then i could just capture back with the knight but in this case White has a lot of problems that they gotta they gotta work through, right? Blacks are already putting a ton of pressure on White's center. You know this bishop is is about to be activated as well. And if you take the pawn, we capture back the queen, right? Uh, if you if you take back with the king, your king is not going to be able to castle. Our king is potentially with a check in the future. So that's definitely not what White, um, you know, wants to do from a comfortability standpoint. And if you capture back with the knight. Uh, we play a move like knight c6, and at this point, guys, we're simply going to play, you know, a very fast developmental chess, develop our pieces as fast as we can, and try to put the pressure on white. White gets a pawn, but I don't think it's worth it, right? Let's say they try to hold on to it with a move like f4. We develop, right? We attack c4. I think knight e3 is the best move here. Even if they do play that, we can simply castle queenside, 
bishop c5 continue putting on the pressure if a move like b3 just solidifying that pawn for the the future okay well castle queenside and you know white can play a move like bishop b2 trying to prevent f6 by the way f6 is a key idea here just trying to break open that center so that our rook can get activated as well but if white tries to stop this okay we play knight b4 we're threatening a fork if you play rook over we take the pawn if you play king over we have bishop c5 with check i mean there's just there's just so much going on here for black right uh and okay going back to knight f6 that's the main line with d4 right so you know we take on d5 if c4 we go to b6 uh if knight c3 uh we have e5 breaking the game open and if knight f3 e5 doesn't work anymore but you can look at the options of c5 as well as g6 uh which is very popular just being shadowing your bishop and playing chess right uh, but okay, what 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 move do we see here quite a bit, right? What move did I see quite a bit when I was playing? I saw the move of c4. And in one sense, this kind of makes sense, right? White here is trying to hold on to the pawn, and, and we're obviously not going to take it because we just lose our knight. But this isn't the best move for white, okay? Especially if they take uh, on c6 because we're going to capture back with the knight. And sure, white is up a pawn, but for what reason? d4 is simply black square. Right. If you play d4, we capture back, we're evening out the material, and we're up development. If you play knight f3 trying to fit this move in, we're playing e5 and uh, you know, just getting a grip on that square. And eventually white's gonna, you know, at one point or another play d3 uh, in most cases. And if they don't, they're gonna have problems. If they do, they have problems, right? In fact, the you know, the the computer stockfish recommends us just break this game open with e4. Uh, I personally I was always a fan of bishop f5, just adding more and more pressure onto this backwards pawn it's backwards because it can't move forward um, with help of other pawns right there's no pawns in this game that can ever help this pawn push unless there's some kind of capture so you know bishop f5 make this pawn a target continue developing oftentimes when i play this i win this pawn pretty quickly with with you know a huge advantage in development and activity of my pieces so there is the scandinavian defense with d5 right if they take you can go into the main line with queen captures back or you can go into the modern uh variation with knight f6 what else do we have available well the perk is also an option the perk defense uh is is one of those options which which really is you know we don't really care what the opponent does most of the time for the first few moves right we're kind of just staying in our own lane we're playing one two three and four right most of the time in the perk we're playing these four moves right off the bat um, there are some exceptions, like I know uh, against the burn variation with bishop g5, I'm a big fan of h6, trying to kick that bishop around or even get the bishop pair right away in the game. Uh, but okay, I mean, you know, if white plays knight of three, we just fian fianchetto here, castle king side. And now there's a ton of different moves that we could play. You know, c6, preparing b5, a6, preparing b5. We have knight c6 available. Bishop g4 is a great option as well. So much on the table. And uh, all that to say, there is a ton of studying that goes into the perk. I would not recommend it, um, you know, for, for beginner players. Even intermediate players, it, it is a little bit dicey, right? You really got to know your theory. Um, so I would say if you're going to play the perk, this is one of those openings that you can't just you can't just play it and just, just play it for fun. Like, I mean, you can, but you're probably not going to get the best results. What you want to do is study the opening theory rigorously, right? And, uh, you know, I've, I've made multiple vid videos um on on this system right i mean go into this position just a couple moves back you know we have the austrian attack that we have to prepare for the classical variation the burn right we got to prepare for the burn we have bishop e3 right this move here um you know white you know kind of going for a 150 attack kind of kind of option um you know there's so, there's so much on the table that we have to have to look out for so you know the perk defense solid opening it has been played at the gm level uh, but all that to say it is going to take a ton of studying wouldn't recommend it until you're intermediate and if you are intermediate you still got to hit that book pretty hard right going back to e4 next up we have the owens defense i'm a big fan of the system you know you could really play it no matter what level you're at it starts out with this move of b6 right and uh okay i mean really this opening and the next few that we're going to be covering with the alakine's defense the modern and well my favorite one which some of you may know about i'll reveal that opening at the end all of these opening give the opponent the center right it allows it allows the opponent to just take full control of the center of the board but from that point 
right? From that point, we're going to make that center a target, right? So, okay, let's say white here plays a move like d4, which you're probably going to see almost every single game. We're now going to play bishop to b7, attacking that pawn. Oftentimes, white will play a move like knight c3. And if you do see this move, you got to play e6 and bishop b4, right? Very simple, very simple play to start, right? In the Owens, we're going one, two, and three. And if there's a knight there, okay, we'll pin it. Notice here, with that knight being pinned, we're threatening to win this pawn on e4. So if white just makes a move, we're up a pawn, right? So, okay, let's say white defends it. We put on more pressure, right? Again, if you castle, we remove the knight, we win a pawn. If you play something like h3, we just take it, right? We can just take that pawn right off. Let's say here white plays a move like queen e2. We advance again with d5. Notice all of the pressure that we're putting on that e4 pawn uh, in addition to pinning that knight to the king on e1, right? Now, there's a few different moves here that white can try. Um, I mean, first off, if, you know, white goes with e takes d5, uh, in that case, you know, I'm a big fan of actually queen captures on d5. Right. And OK, if you see something like castling kingside, we can take the knight, swing the queen over and, uh, you know, just a great fun, fun game for black. Right. Uh, and if here we see a move like E5, we're going to throw our knight into the center of the board. Right. We're not going to be not going to play passively and bring this knight back. We're going to throw our knight into E4 and uh, really double up on this knight. And notice here, if white captures off that knight, we take back and this queen can't take the pawn. Right. I mean, I, I guess you could, but you just lose your queen on the spot. Right. So here white has to move their knight. Right. Unless they want to lose that as well. And in that case, notice that the knight no longer defends that centralized D pawn. Right. So we're going to throw our queen into the action, putting pressure on both the knight and the pawn uh, on E5. That's kind of sitting by itself. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is just crushing for black nearly a minus two advantage. So the owns defense, um, you know, a, a great system, right? You see E4, you just go one, two, and three. If there's a knight there, you pin it. And uh, and really from that point, okay, you can start to think about moves like knight F6, D5, C5, even if you don't see uh, knight C3 on the board, right? Next up on our list, we got the Alakine's defense with knight F6. This opening as well, we're, we're actually inviting white to chase our knight around like crazy, but we're wanting white to overextend their position so that there can be cracks in the wall and so that we can gain counterattacking chances against those big targets. Let's say here white plays a move like E5. Okay, we'll move the knight. You want to kick our knight around? Okay. You want to play a move like d4? We're going to have d6 available starting to chip away. What about the move of c5? Is this a good move for white? The answer is no, because we're simply going to bring our knight back to d5. And sure, you have a lot of space, but for what reason, right? You still haven't developed any of your pieces, right? We've developed one of ours, and these pawns are now very easy targets with a move like d6. Right. You see something like bishop c4? Okay, just take off that pawn, continue developing. We're threatening to win a pawn now. If you want to start trading as white, go on ahead. If you defend, we're going to play something like knight d7 here. Y'all, these pawns are simply too far extended, and they're going to start getting picked off. Right. Going back, uh, if we do see uh, that, that main line of d4, or d4 followed by c4 either way we're wanting to play d6 right so the moment you see e5 you want to get your knight to the queen side play d6 and uh you know okay from this point we can start to start to chip away play a move like knight there putting pressure on that pawn notice you can't kick this knight around unless you want to lose this pawn if you kick this knight same situation as earlier and here if we move like bishop b3 we play bishop f5 knight b4 ideas in the air potentially um in the game and yeah from this point we're just gonna just gonna continue developing and putting as much pressure as we can on these pawns very uncomfortable position for white at least for me right in fact when i'm white and uh you know going back when i see that move of knight f6 i don't even play e5 i just don't right i play knight c3 and just defend the pawn because i don't want to i don't want to mess with it that's just my you know that's just what i do i'm an e4 player uh, you know, since I was a kid, um, you know, as of late, I've been mixing it up more, but you know, I, I don't mess with it. I don't want to kick that night around. So, uh, yeah. And I, I would say the al defense, I, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. Um, it is, it is complicated and you really do need to know what you're doing, right? I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get your night trapped. Um, and, and just in general, it's, it's not one of those classical openings, right? Where you're, you're developing pieces in a normal fashion, right? I mean, your first few moves, first four moves could be all night moves with the same night, right? So 
Um, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but intermediate player, uh, intermediate players is probably the best place for it. It's kind of interesting. I think at the very advanced level, it doesn't work very well at the beginner level. It doesn't work very, very well, but at the intermediate level, it seems to, seems to do well. So, um, yeah, so that's the Alakines and let's see, what do we got next? Next we got G6. Okay. Now this is the modern defense. I haven't made a video on this one yet. But, you know, g6 is, is quite a bit of fun. Uh, you know, we just fiend shadow that bishop. And there's a lot of things that can happen here. I mean, in this case, we could transpose into a perk. Uh, we could even go with this move of c5, right? Play c5 and, uh, you know, really put some pressure on d4. The whole idea here is that white can win a pawn, but not for very long because we simply check and pick it off. If you want to kick our queen, we'll go right back. And we're just developing from this point, right? Uh, so that's that's the modern just a quick intro. We're playing bishop g7 and then depending on what white plays right There's a lot of theory here um, You know with knight f3 and knight c3 we could think about a move like c5 putting immediate pressure on that pawn on g4 or we could just transpose into another option right play something like the perk or For our last opening in this video the hippopotamus defense. Okay, let's say uh, Yeah, let's say in this case we have knight f3 we play a move like d6 this is the hippo, right? And if you have, you know, if you've watched this channel for more than you know a, a week, you probably know that I've made way too many hippo videos. But here's the idea, right? We're we're really getting this kind of formation. It's not really as as much about oh they go here, I go here, there they go there, I go here. It's a system, right? We're trying to set up um, a structure for our pieces to work with, and this is the structure, right? Two knights in the center, two feet and shadow bishops, and six pawns on the sixth rank right this is what we want and uh you know from this point there's a ton of different things that we can do with the hippo we can start to expand on the queen side uh, or the king side depending on the position right obviously in this case b5 uh, isn't available we also have flank pawn moves right flank pawn moves we have center pawn moves as well uh, we can bring our knights to f6 or c6 on top of that Depending on the situation, we can, you know, kind of do this queen maneuver where we get our queen to a7, drop it to a8, form a battery ram on that diagonal. And uh, in a situation like this, uh, you know, white white's putting so much pressure on h6 that we can't castle because we'd simply lose the pawn, but we can slow castle, right? In fact, that's what the computer recommends here. Slow castle, bring the rook to f8, and continue playing. And it's very interesting. The whole idea of the hippo is that we're, we're forming this structure. From the structure, we're going to slowly kind of advance out of it, you know, stretch our pieces out unfold them a little bit and the second that white you know makes a move right the second that they try to break something open we just close it down right we lock it up and now we're the ones with the leverage in this position the next move for black is probably going to be f5 putting pressure on e4 and in this case threatening to trap the bishop on e3 i made a course on the hippo i'll leave i'll leave that in the uh, in the description as well if you want to go check it out over uh, over six hours of content uh, on the hippo that's what i've been playing in tournaments um, as of late, I, I, I hit the candidate master title with the hippo, and I'm now looking to hit the national master title uh, with the hippo, which is my next goal. And uh, yeah, so there, there, there's a lot of different openings that we talked about, you know, from super aggressive, complicated, like the Sicilian, um, you know, to, su to, to really just super simple, right? The Carl Kahn, uh, very positional based, right? So uh, let me know down below uh, in the comments if you have any questions about uh, what I just covered, and uh, and let me know as well what your favorite response is against the movie for. Hey guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of April in 2023. Love you guys, and uh, it's been awesome to have you guys as part of the Patreon community. If you haven't joined the Patreon yet, there are some exclusive benefits that you gain from becoming a member, and if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description below.